All right. Uh, welcome everyone to Memphis Game Developers July Workshop Meetup. Um, we usually do these in person, but because of a global pandemic, we are doing them remotely. But um, here soon, we will hopefully be meeting up in person again. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, today, we have Daniel Fisher, um, who will give us a postmortem on um, a really cool VR training um simulation uh that <laughs> several of us had the, the opportunity to kind of you know see it from the beginning and it was um really cool back then so i'm looking forward to seeing how how it progressed um and uh just want to give a shout out to tennessee entertainment commission who um helped sponsor us and uh, the things we do uh, so be on the lookout for upcoming announcements for possible game jams that we might be doing. Uh, it's still kind of up in the air. We'll see how the whole um, uh, co-situation goes with with um, our meetup location. Um, but we'll give out more information uh, when that's available. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hand it off to you, Daniel. All right. Can Can you hear me good? Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, let me pull and, this up. Yeah, you go and pull yours up, and I'll uh, make sure that that is the one being shown. Yeah, let's make sure we got it good this time. Is it good? Can you see it? Yes. All right, good to go. So, uh, we already tried with the actual presentation view, guys, and it's not going to work like that for some reason on Discord. Um, so I'm just going to have to run it this way. Uh, all right, so this is uh, a postmortem for what was the eventual name that came of the prototype was the TTF Tactical Simulator. Um, so, and, and I'm Daniel, we'll get into that, though. I got an introduction slide. So, And this, I'm going to tell you, this is more informal, guys. Um, if you've ever sat in any of my talks or anything, I'm pretty much laid back and i just I, you know i put uh, as little information as i can on the screen that way uh you guys can kind of get you know you pay attention to what i'm saying and stuff so all right um my of course uh, once again my name is daniel fisher i do have a personal brand named subliminal x uh it's independent it's been around for a minute we got a few things but uh for the most part it's just my personal brand now I've been freelance on the independent sector for a while as well, uh, and I currently onboarded with a very, very good company last week called 3D Media. So uh, it's 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 good stuff. So this prototype, it actually it's a, the idea. It's funny how the idea started because you know you always hear those stories about napkins and stuff like that or or things. This actually uh started with me pardon my french you know bullshitting with a memphis firefighter uh we got to talking about training and, and the differences between you know military training and city training and uh things we thought they could do better and stuff well uh somehow or another developing came into the question you know vr interactions and stuff like that and next thing we know boom we're off to the races now the way i'm going to break this down a little bit is i'm going to go over you know the actual process of the project and then i'll go over the uh pitfalls the kudos the t and then i'll hit the takeaway and then i'll show you guys uh, as well as talk you through uh the final product video that i've got i set it up a certain way so that i can talk to you about it so anyway the development cycle all right it took 10 months 45 days for the pitch and seven days for the budget proposal uh, it actually stemmed from three different conceptual ideas it that's it, it we'll get further into that later the pitch creation yeah i said 45 days up a month that's a little over a month i'm not going to count it as 60 days two months or anything uh the pitch itself actually lasted 90 minutes and it led to a budget proposal um which actually 
wasn't a bad wasn't a bad result. All right, so let's get into some of these pitfalls. All right, so the idea there were three different non-meshing ideas to start with. Uh, it wasn't anything, you know. It's it just in the beginning, it didn't seem like uh, any, you know, any any ideas could could mesh well together. Everything just seemed to keep falling apart. Uh, it was also a lack of initial direction uh, when it came to to where, where where we wanted to go, what we wanted to do with it, because there were so many different possibilities. Uh, which leads to the next point: lack of resources of the TTPs and SOPs. Uh, TTPs, your tactical, uh, your technical tactical procedures, and then your standard operating procedures for what they do when they get to uh, the actual scene. So, um, a lack of all that led to you know the ideas being kind of constrained to where we we were inside, we were dancing, a tiptoeing around a box pretty much. And then obviously because it's an independent project, and uh, we we went with the whole. Uh, how, how's that saying go? Rather ask for forgiveness than permission. We had little to no budget. Uh, we did have a small one, but we used that for uh, other things uh, throughout, you know, things that we actually needed. Uh, here are the three different concepts. The first one was just an initial concept, just to try to see if we could run uh, the scene through the VR headset, which it, it held a good mount. And it, keep in mind, this is on the Rift S. This too, as well, was on the this, this, the middle one was on the Rift S as well. That was the second one. It didn't turn out so well. And then the third concept, it turned out pretty well. Uh, it, it actually led to the final product and everything. But this picture here is actually on the Quest too. All right. So um, some oh, I messed up. There we go. All right. So some of the kudos from the idea point. Uh, we worked with what we had available and, and we're, were allowed access to. So from the liaison, we were able to get, you know, certain points, uh, certain SOPs, uh, certain videos, stuff like that. But we weren't actually allowed access into any of the actual files that, that would have made it better, uh, in my personal opinion. So with what we had, we actually... we. We actually pumped some something out that we could we could be proud of. Uh, once there was an initial direction, it was easier to finish. Yes, um, like I said, it was chaos in the beginning, but once we gathered an, an initial, you know, once the initial direction came through, uh, everything else just fell in place. So it was very simple from that point on. Uh, and uh, one one good thing that we got from the liaison is we got a tour of one of the fire departments. Uh, able to take pictures, you know, uh, save the pictures, stuff like that, to go back and reference for research ideas and, and, and all of that good uh, nonsense and stuff. All right, so the development, development pitfalls. You guys, I promise inside of the presentation view, this actually sits right. <laughs> so anyway... Um, the initial cycle project management uh, was not handled properly by myself. Uh, I had I, I was more trying to get everything brushed out and trying to get everything going. So there was there was no really no direction and and there was no deadlines. There was nothing like that. Uh, that actually led to you know in my opinion uh, a lot of the team losing faith in the project, which I would have too. And so it ended up turning into a solo cycle. That is, uh, that's my, that, that's, that was, that was not good as well. Um, from there, uh, one of the biggest pitfalls was, you know, uh, as a, you know, doing it solely, you wear too many hats. And wearing all those hats, it deteriorates your, uh, quality of product because you're so worried about everything else. So it leads to burnout. And then, of course, uh, while you're trying to, you know, construct this idea, it's that one person's idea. There's not a lot of people to bounce it off of. So it ends up just being one, you know, solo perspective. And that's just it. It could be so much better with uh, other people to bounce it off of. 
Now, one thing that was very, very hectic was finding the proper uh, assets to utilize to keep a productive and proper frame rate running through the headset, which um, all the this, this stuff meshes, the code, the lighting, particle systems, hell, even the physics were, were, uh, were affecting every little aspect, especially once it hit the headset. So the, uh, learning how to bypass a lot of that stuff and to what to look for uh, and stuff like that became a hassle. It, it became uh, the main focus of the development cycle. Was, oh, can I use this? Oh, Lord, now i got to break it down. Okay, well, now i got to pull it in. Well, it's still not. Let's see how to fix it now. Um, once the hardware switch was made from the Rift S to the Quest 2, that solved a lot of the problems. But it added new problems, which that that sucked really bad. But you know, we it happens. And then obviously, you know, there were a lot of budgetary. Couldn't you know? We couldn't. I couldn't go out and buy, you know, the, this big dev team. I couldn't go out and buy this product or that product. You know, uh, pretty much relied on. Uh, all the programs that I've already paid for and that I utilize, as well as any free programs that I could use to get this prototype off the ground. Uh, also, I had to go and, for the final prototype, go to directly to the artists of those assets and speak with them and pretty much sign documentation stating that the assets that are in the prototype will not leave the prototype and will only be shown for the purposes of the prototype and for my personal uh, projects. That's it. So once I got those, that helped out as well. Um, kudos on the development side. Once the deadlines were created and we had everything set in stone, it, uh, it created purpose pretty much behind the development cycle. And made it to where it was a lot easier to come in every day and know, hey, I got to get this done. I got to get that done. If I don't get this done, I could miss that deadline. And the user or potential client could, you know, just say no off the top. The liaison could say I'm done. You know, it, it created purpose for developing this project. Another kudos. Creating this this whole scenario from minimal resources was 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 in my opinion pretty nice um a lot of people like to go out and get all these systems and all this other stuff for example f mod or uh all this other junk i had no need for it did not use it there's sound everything in there uh three you know it stemmed from three concepts by the end they finally meshed together and everything finally came uh where everything was was good now um i said it before i didn't buy any any outside systems so uh, ever as we we as developers know that means that i had to create every system the sound system the uh behavior tree system for the npcs the uh, UI system, well, besides the OVR input stuff, obviously, I'm using Oculus, I'm using the framework for the, o for the Oculus, but I still had to create all the other little small framework, as well as use Unity's default audio framework to, to, to get this going. Uh, it was it's very code intensive at the, at the very end of it, but it, it ended up working out because we I didn't have to... You know, go back and read a manual or go back and go through an API or anything of that nature because all the, the systems were created manually. Um, we obviously automatically know where to go and where to get uh, what you need. Testing was, was a pain, but it was done. And kudos. Uh, testing was done every day, once before and once after uh the work was committed on the project that led to us being able or me being able to find the potential bugs that were running not only from the previous day but from what i had just worked on 
So uh, the testing purposes, they, they, they worked out really well. And then, obviously, uh, kudos has got to go with the overall product, just, you know, with minimal budget. I mean, that is, you know, you hear of these budgets for these large companies, and obviously us as independent developers, we already know that a lot of that, you know, is pretty much, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, it's, it's just, you know, part of the scheme of them making money. I say fluff, but um, if you really need to get it done, you can get it done without having to spend millions and millions of dollars. So, um, yeah, that overall product with the minimal resources and budgets, that, that, was, that was pretty good. The pitch. All right. This this was kind of fun. We all know that I'm not not much of a people person at all. And um, yes, we did the the pitch was created and everything was set to the side. And I actually had a guy that I've known for like 30 years. He was he's a he's been a used car salesman for like 15 of them years. I was going to have him deliver the pitch for me, but he backed out at the last second. So I had to do it. Now, uh, the date was sent at the last minute, meaning I got the liaison sent me the date. And what it was based off of was when these city officials had time to even listen to me talk. So obviously to them, that wasn't very key, very important. So um, when it finally did happen, it was, you know, jerk neck. Hey, you better get over here and do it and you better be prepared. Uh, the pitch was ready. Like I said, I was not. I was nervous. Knees were knocking, all that stuff, because I, you know, I'm good at making the stuff. But I'm not good at talking about it, like trying to sell it to somebody. Um, I guess I'm I'm a bad developer, but the way that I've always felt, and the way you already know know their earnest, I've always said, buy it, don't. I don't care. I'm gonna make it anyway. So, uh, I mean, that's just the way that I've always felt about it. And, and so it was kind of hard for me to prepare myself to give that pitch. Um, once I get in the room, though, here's the funny part. It was supposed to be at a meeting hall. That's the next point. But it ended up being in, in a conference room, which means that I was boxed in, and uh, yeah, it's not very good for me. And not only that, but I had the chief of training, and the chief of the academy in the same room with me, and they were not originally supposed to be there. It was only supposed to be the training supervisor. So uh, you can automatically, you know, understand why I was nervous. But, yeah, but, and, and believe me, that nervousness, it didn't show really, but I could feel it, and that just wasn't good in the middle of a pitch. That's why I put it as a pitfall. Uh, the location was not planned. It, it was not, it, like I said, it was originally supposed to be a, at a union hall, and it ended up being at the training academy there off Fight Road. So um, a lot of things changed in the end. Uh, luckily, we were able to, to make everything work and link up and um, take care of business. Uh, another pitfall of the pitch. I This was one of my first pitches ever I had no idea you know maybe I needed to you know even research if Memphis fire department is interested in buying new technology I had no idea even if they had it in the budget to buy the technology so that was pretty much going out on a limb with the whole project and it 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 just it wasn't good, I believe, when, when it came towards the, the actual pitch. I should have had some numbers uh, pertaining to them, even though they probably would have asked me how I got them. But then again, it probably would have been a little better for them to see it in action versus them, you know, doing it on, you know, looking at it by themselves. Kudos. All right. So. I tried to put this in a way that wasn't uh, derogatory, but um, I took into account before I went in for the pitch that this is Memphis. They have probably no idea of technology anyway. So um, in the beginning of the pitch, I actually gave them a history lesson on virtual reality. And the very beginning of the pitch, I showed them where it's being utilized 
Um, I talked about the numbers from VR learner research reports and all that good nonsense. So that that helped them to understand what they were looking at. Now, the whole time I was doing this, I gave them hand-eye tools. Uh, I was passing the Rift S around while I was doing the demonstration with the Quest 2. So, uh, I believe that helped in a little bit. Uh, not only could they see what I was talking about through the pitch, but they could actually put that headset on. And you know, I mean, it wasn't turned on or anything, but they could actually put it on, look at it, you know, play with the controls and stuff like that. Uh, the actual physical demonstration of the prototype. I let I let them watch me set it up, which we all know is very simple, um, and then obviously turn it on and play it for them. I let the chief and the training supervisor get under the hood and let them run through the whole process, and they they loved it. Um, it I'm sure a lot of you know when you put a new user under a VR headset and they look around and see that you know they're like wow. A lot of the time, if they don't throw up first. Um, yeah, but um, most of the time, so it, it, it kind of blew their minds that, you know, they were actually able to walk around because uh, the prototype itself, it I, I would say it's a late alpha, early beta, meaning, yes, it needs polish. Yes, it needs work here. Yes, it needs work there. But for the most part, you can run through from start to finish and not have any issues uh, doing the scenario. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna show more of that towards the end after the talking. Um, and then obviously through the whole, I, I did enough research as far as virtual reality, as far as how it's being utilized, and as far as what I can do for them. That when they did have the questions to answer, ask me. Um, I, there were no questions that were left unanswered. Uh, one of the biggest questions I got was from one of their quali uh, from one of their um, their training officers in there that he actually builds training scenarios with 3D assets, but it's not it's it's different. It's not like we do in develop in game development. It's more like like a video and stuff. And I asked him. He asked me, "How is this any different?" I put him under the headset. That was my answer. As soon as he got out from under the headset, he understood. Um, and then, of course, I was asked, how, how is it going to take away, or how, uh, we cannot take away manual training for digital training. And I just like I told him, this is not to take away the manual training. This is to add to it. So um, those are some of the kudos for the pitch. Uh, and you know, I, this is kind of a hidden one. You know, I didn't, I didn't urinate on myself in there, so that was pretty good. That's in my opinion. Now, takeaways from the actual project, from a whole, from a, you know, from a, from just for just from a whole perspective, and you know, I'm not going to go into any different points. Uh, but takeaways coming through. Uh, one of the things that I learned a lot about was a lot of the Unity and Oculus capabilities between each other. Um, I learned a lot about, you know, how to deploy all this other good stuff inside of there that I was familiar with before, but wasn't just, you know, right hands on, well, now, you know, I can, it's not a problem anymore. Um, and then obviously another thing, you know, that we all, you know, you got to learn for the there's the frame reduction how to utilize you know what meshes you know poly counts textures uh you know how many particle systems what do you how many you know all of that uh, i learned as well and i but i learned it the hard way so uh that's going to stick with me for a while and then obviously optimization of the code and stuff to to be able to run more uh more effective and and, and more powerful through the actual you know, whole simulation and stuff. So, it, 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 there, I learned a good bit. Um, I also learned research your target user's budget. Now, like I said, with the budget proposal, it was not um, rejected, but more set back a couple years. Um, they want to relook at you know their budget in a couple years and then come back to it. So. 
this time when I go back in a couple of years, I need, obviously now I know they're interested, but what I need to do is I need to make sure that, you know, I'm not pitching them a number that is something that is, you know, unachievable for them. Obviously, you know, it needs to be something that's going to be sustainable for uh, keeping the project life cycle going, but it's also going to be need to be something that that they can they can afford or there's no point in doing it. Um, I need to take more time in making sure the project management is healthy. Um, obviously, we there's got to be a direction. If there is no direction and everybody's just going in separate directions and doing different things without one specific direction, it's going to lead to chaos, and chaos is not good. Um, deadlines and accountability. Deadlines are a must. I, I mean, I know I'll, everybody hates hearing that word, but without that word, without that that goal or that you know deadline or that milestone deadline or a lot of those different deadlines, you're not going to finish your project in a timely manner. I mean, you're not. Um, accountability as well. You need to hold. You got to hold yourself accountable if you don't get something completed because you won't. You know, in my case, I want to play Legend of Zelda. So guess what? I'm not going to do that. Well, I need to hold myself accountable. Or that project's not going to get done. So uh, that's some. That's some more takeaways. Uh, can't wear too many hats. That's something else I learned. I feel yes, the product is good. Um, it can be better, but I feel like I could have done better if I wouldn't have wore too many hats. So. From this, I am taking away that I need to sit back and, you know, try to work one thing first, then maybe turn my attention instead of trying to wear 15 different hats and do 15 different things at one time. Uh, I know we, we try to, we got to do what we can as independent developers to get this stuff done, but you, you can't burn yourself out, brother, or you won't want to do it, period. It'll, uh, it'll make you sick to get on that keyboard. <clears throat> All right. So, <clears throat> what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run through. I, I've got, like I said, I've got it set up like this for a reason. Uh, I'm gonna run through and I'm gonna, you know, talk about some things, stuff like that, throughout the projects or the the, the prototypes, so you guys can see and maybe um, and see the direction and the way things turned out, as well as how I imp implemented some of those systems. Um, and then after that, uh, you can, I'll take some questions. So let's uh, go ahead. All right, so this was one scene in the beginning. This is all actually ran through the headset. Uh, this is all running through the headset. Uh, a lot of these particle systems were a pain in the butt, especially that water one. So, yeah, that one, I just didn't like the water. I think I could have done better. All that is a simple dot product as well as a ray trace, make a ray cast, making sure that you're both looking at each other. She's going to go back to her office and give you an option to run through the fire station and uh, get some VR headset training because a lot of the firefighters didn't have any training. So obviously go to the vending machine and get me a drink. So he's going to go to the vending machine. These are... Uh, these particle systems right here I had to put inside of After Effects and make sure that they were going to be good to go for uh, VR training. So it was the pain in the butt. Uh, a lot of the particle systems inside of the, the actual prototype are a pain in the ass. Now, um, the whole stuff going through there, that was just, you, you guys know that's, that's simple to get rid of. It's just, like I said, it's a prototype. Now we're going to go into the mission training. The training begins, obviously, uh, he's going to go and connect the hose. Now, while he goes and connects with the hose, uh, I'm going to talk about some things. All right, so there's a lot of different systems inside of that house right there. Okay, well, anyway, there's a lot of different systems inside of that house right there. There's a lot of uh, different, um, there it is, a lot of different pointers and stuff of that nature. Uh, the red is all the actual waypoints for the nav mesh system. 
the green is all of the objectives for the raycast system and the collision system to allow for the user to connect the hose, conduct an outer perimeter search, conduct an inner perimeter search, make entry to the building, and clear the hazard. Um, so that that took a good bit of time. It, it, and, and as you see over there, I'm setting uh, what I'm doing in that script. That's a system for the objectives. And I'm setting those because we're not in, in the video. I'm not going to go through the objectives. But um, so you can see at the end how the test results are. Uh, when you when you get done, it comes up with a test results screen that tells you where you passed, where you failed, what you did to pass, and what you did to fail. So um, that that'll come up in a minute. Right now, he's going to go run the outer cordon perimeter. Uh, and what what, he, what you're supposed to do there is you have to run through. There's a ray that shoots through the center anchor of the camera. And everywhere you look, it, it, it's sensing for the colliders. If it hits the colliders of those certain portions, it comes back and says you looked at that wall. All right. That's, you know, because as the firefighters, they got to run through and they got to check those outer perimeters. And, may, you know, that tells it kind of tells them where the fire's at from what I was told anyway. So, and, you know, to see where the fuel or smoke and stuff like that's at. Yeah, he's coming back around now. Now, another problem we had is, is the skybox. Skybox was killing our frame rate. So instead of the skybox, I actually used a, J, a JPEG. That is a JPEG in the background. All right, so now they're going to clear. He's going to go upstairs and check all the rooms up there uh, while, you're, while I'm coming down here and just messing around. Now, the way that you clear the building on the inside is there is a collider system set up that texts, detects your entry into each room. If you do not go into that room, you have failed the objective because you have not cleared the entire building. So, um, which in the video, I'm actually looking for him. He, he got, I think he, uh, he's clearing the downstairs kitchen out. Uh, but yeah, after you do all that, you go in and... Um, you clear the hazard. Like I said, this is just a simple prototype, guys. Um, from here, you just touch the water hose. The water hose puts the fire out. And uh, that's it for the actual test. Now, from here, the test pops up and tells you what you did right and what you did wrong. So, obviously, we connected the hose. We made entry by two, and we cleared the inner perimeter, which, which I set those inside of, the, uh, inside of the actual inspector earlier. Um, so that's, uh, that's the actual prototype. I mean, obviously it went pretty quick because, I mean, I was running through it. I know exactly what's going on, what's to do. But obviously each scenario, if you, if they, you know, if they got to run through it, run around the building and stuff, was going to take them approximately 15 minutes. Uh, that's what it, that's what it took the guy that was my liaison to go through each thing. So, or go through that whole scenario right there. Um, but anyway, you can see where the particle systems were probably a problem. You can see where all the physics were probably a problem. And you can see where a lot of the, uh, the like, skybox and materials and stuff, where, where those were going to create a problem and they had to be fixed. All right, any questions? So you had, uh, when you did that, that um, went through that thing, you had one firefighter there, NPC, that was actually doing the same thing as like a, kind of like a guide in a way? Yes, yes, so and, and we the, did. Doing the things that he, that, that firefighter's doing. Yes, and, and the reason that that was put in there was so that once um, the actual user put the headset on and went in and stuff, like for a first time or whatever, then they can understand what's going on. Because obviously if that firefighter's not in there and I say, hey, go connect the hose. Well, what the hell, man? I mean, I've never been in here before. Yeah, what yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, that, that, that actually came from testing as well because the original firefighter wasn't in there. And the uh, the uh, liaison got lost, and it just didn't work out. So I ended up having to put him in. He's just running on a simple behavior tree waypoint system. So. 
Anybody else got a question? So, hey, uh, what's going on, Daniel? So, hey, what's going on, Rakeem? Uh, not much. Uh, appreciate you for sharing with us in this uh, postmortem. Um, it's all good, bro. Yeah, is that the only video that you have of um, the project as far as finish uh, prototyping wise? Uh, no, actually, uh, on my actual YouTube channel, there is a devlog for that project that goes all the way back to the actual conceptual stages. So there are plenty of videos now. As fine as the as far as far as the final uh, prototype video and prototype uh, build negative, I do not because um, and the liaison is the one who talked me into this is we don't want to give away because he's still trying to pitch it places so that last uh that last just fully video i i'm not gonna make <laughs> i got you yeah it's one of those one of a link to your uh channel that'll be cool you know afterwards oh yeah okay that's fine hey uh that's fine brother i'll, I'll give you a link to it you can just uh you can post in the uh the general chat that way uh anybody can check it out Okay, yeah, um, there's also a bunch of other videos on there as well, everything from how to create animation events in Unity and machine behavior, AI, and all that stuff on there. So um, there's a lot of good stuff on that on, on my YouTube channel as well. So um, you can, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in there. Uh, anybody else got any? Got, nobody's got any questions, I see, huh? So you said that they... Uh, they have uh, they've approved the project and then they're just gonna it's gonna take them all to get the they're gonna meet back, well, back up in 2023 or whatever well no 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 i met back with the chief and uh the chief he said right now uh because of budgetary issues that we would have to push the project till 2023 and we will revisit in 2023 so oh, gotcha. um yeah so my intention uh for this prototype and project is to keep tweaking on it in my spare time um until it's to the point to where when i do take it back uh guess what they can't say no yeah. because it just blows their underwear off you know <laughs> so um but yeah that's 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 my intention with it but um I, I am putting a lot of other projects that I have in the background and into the wayside, but I'm also putting them in the wayside for uh, for another reason as well. But yeah, that's that's something else. You ain't got any questions for me there, Zach? I think that's who ZG is, ain't it? Sure is. Anybody else? All right. Hold on. Hold on. We got to let me see. It might be somebody that says on red. You know, Zach might be, uh, he might be in from his phone while he's on the road. So, yeah. Might be why he can't get in. Oh, I, okay. I see you, uh, uh, Steven. I'm sorry. I didn't have the, uh, the, uh, chat up. Uh, yeah, man, I got I got it pretty far into it. Uh, writing the actual buzz, budgetary proposal, the, in my opinion, was fun. Uh, I didn't, I, I really, I mean, I've, I've done the, a little bit of the freelance, you know, I've, well, I've done quite a bit of the freelance work, uh, but I've never really had to uh, give myself uh, an hourly wage. So on that budgetary proposal, trying to create my own hourly wages, so as well as other hourly wages for other developers, I was like, wow, that that's kind of cool, you know, because... I mean, it just was anyway. Yeah, the but the budget was was something I enjoyed doing, writing the the proposal, as well as uh, just the whole the whole prototype itself was to me was fun. Yeah, and it's, yeah, good. it's good that you're able to like to, to be able to do that. Cause for me, I, I I wouldn't even know where to start for budgets, and uh, <laughs> I'd just be like, uh, I'd. Making them yeah, I mean it. It it. I had to do a little bit of research, but um, it just kind of you know because I and then again you got you, you got to remember I you know I, I I run a warehouse as well, so um, 
I mean, I'm used to having to, to fill out those reports and stuff like that. So it just kind of helped out in the long run, too. Good. Um, I'm going to post yeah, we'll, that link. We'll, uh, yeah, go ahead and post that link, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, end it here if there's no more questions. Um, I have so, one more question. Four. Go ahead. Uh, so um, I noticed you said you had to wear a lot of hats, right? Yes, sir. Uh, when you say a lot of hats, that's pretty much you had to take care of texture, material, like uh, how the game rendered. Yes, sir. Uh, Every the coding and stuff like that. Yes, sir. Every uh, once it got, once it got to the point to where, like I said, the, the solo push. Um, yes, I had to check textures, replace textures, fix textures. Uh, check. I had to insert rigs, create animation state machines, create animations, even um, all that. Yeah, pretty everything you said, and then of course write the code for it too, as well as those uh, create the visual effects and everything. So yeah. And, and, and about what stage did you start bringing in the uh, art assets and stuff like that? The art assets were brought in. Uh, uh, Cause you said it took ten months, right? So, well, at all right. So, so all right. So the first, uh, the first four months, that whole concept ended up getting scrapped. So from there, I had to reach out to new artists and get new assets. So the last six months, at the very beginning, the the assets were put in first, and then from there, I went around and and I did everything else. That answer? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. okay. yeah. Hey, Daniel. Hey, this is Zach. Uh, what's going on, Zach? Man, hey, really impressed with your product, man. You should be really proud of yourself. A sale to the Memphis Fire Department or not, you should be really proud. Um, you, you talked about a couple of items in your, you know, your your negatives. What's the one thing that you wish you would have told yourself six months before that pitch? If you could go back and, and talk to Daniel back then. I could go back um, before the pitch. I would probably tell myself that I'm not as good of a talker as I think I am. And I would probably go back and tell myself to do a little more research as far as the user himself or Memphis is concerned. And I would probably go back and tell myself to not be so stiff in the there middle. You go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, consider that a win, dude. Good job. It looks awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Oh yeah, let me post that link. There's the, I posted that link in the uh, general chat for anybody that just wants to take a look. Um, and um, if that's it, and you guys don't have anything else, I appreciate you coming, listening to me talk, and I'm sure Ernest appreciates y'all coming out too. Yeah, and um, thanks. Yeah, thanks for giving us a talk. It was uh, it's pretty cool. And cool to see the progress on it. Can you uh, can can you send me that video too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. um, I'm gonna uh, actually just haven't stopped it yet, but yeah, I'll send it to you. I'll send the link to it. Uh, so I just wanted to give uh, give a shout out to Daniel for uh, being our speaker today, and um, we'll have uh, we do a meetup every month, uh, and hopefully soon here we'll be doing in person meetups uh, at the FedEx Institute of Technology. Um, be on the lookout for possible game jams coming up. Uh, we, we used to do, you know, we didn't do any for 2020, but uh, we usually did about four game jams uh, a year. Uh, Global Game Jam, Lidum Dare, um, uh, all types of stuff. So be on the lookout for, for any of that. Um, feel free to, you know, um, ask questions or if you have anything you want to show off in Discord, uh, definitely post it. Um, uh, there's a lot of cool people in there that give excellent feedback. So, but, uh, other than that, um, unless anybody has any general questions, uh, I think we'll call it a day. All right, man. Thanks again, Daniel. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. Everybody uh, that came out YouTube, brother. All right. All right. Everybody have an awesome weekend. Yeah, just uh, yeah. If you will send me that uh, that video when you get a chance, Ernest. Will do. All right, thanks, bud. Have have a good night. You too.